We do not stop till nightfall. What about breakfast? We've already had it. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? Welcome back, friends. I'm Rogue, and today we are going to dive a little deeper into one of the classes of Lord of the Rings Online. This is my first attempt at a beginner's guide class video and what I'm hoping to make a series about the classes and how they feel and function from the beginning. My intention is to maybe help a new player in deciding what to play or if you're just curious about the grass being greener with a different class. Today we will be kicking things off with the Lore Master. The Lore Master is a seeker of knowledge and a guardian of wisdom. He wields ancient secrets and lore to confound his foes and aid his friends, protecting them against the dark powers of the enemy. Now, before we dive into the class, we need a race. Only three races are allowed to become a lore master, and they are the human, the elf, and the high elf. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Maybe you are the lost apprentice of one of the blue mages. Maybe you are a forgotten son of Numenor and were raised by the elves of Imladris and recently sent to Bree to investigate Elrond's visions of a dark future. Or maybe you just want a big fucking beard. Regardless of lore, the human begins with plus 15 fate, minus 7 will, plus 5% incoming healing, and plus 15 to might, making them a fine choice for lore master. You could be the last sage of Mirkwood. A wandering scholar who chronicles the events of the Third Age and has seen the fires relit in Barabdur. Maybe a wild elf who scours the land in search of forgotten secrets. Or you could just like elves. Regardless, you will be hurling spells and looking great. Elves begin with minus 20 morale, minus 60 out of combat morale regeneration, plus 15 agility, minus 7 fate, and plus 1% resistance to both poison and disease. You could be an arcanist of the bygone age, or once powerful advisor to Gilgalad, or friend and sage to Glorfindel, or maybe you just want to be an elf, but older. The High Elf is also a fantastic choice for Lore Master and begins with minus 7 to will, minus 7 to fate, plus 20 maximum morale, plus 60 non-combat morale regeneration, and a plus 1% to both poison and disease resistance. Regardless of what race you choose, they are all very capable. This is a flavor choice. My advice, play what's fun. Okay, so we've decided on a race, we have the class, let's dive in. Now the approach to the Lore Master. The game description of the Lore Master refers to them as a support class, as masters of crowd control and wielders of mighty animal companions, with powers of elemental magic and mastery over debuffing foes, and indeed they are all these things, and a little bit more as I'll show later on. Before we get too deep, we should talk about induction skills. These are skills that have a casting time and usually require that your character stand still while performing. The Lore Master has quite a few of them, requiring some setup and tactics before engaging larger groups of enemies. Alright, let's talk about what you start with as a Lore Master. Your beginning spells are Burning Embers, which is an induction spell of 1.2 seconds that deals fire damage and a lingering dot to your enemy over the course of 10 seconds and sits on a 3 second cooldown. Gust of Wind, it's an induction area of effect spell of 1 second casting and deals frost damage to all enemies in a 5 meter radius. If specced into the red tree later on, this spell has a chance to spread the effects of Burning Embers to nearby foes and has a 10 second cooldown. Brand of Bears. This is your starter animal companion. He acts as tank and damage dealer for your lore master. He will become your closest friend at low levels and should always be present in any fight that you engage in. Lightning Strike. This is an induction spell with a casting time of 2 seconds, and although this is a deed spell for the lore master and deals significant lightning damage to a single target, especially if they are under the effect of the Burning Ember spell, due to the casting time of this spell, it should be reserved as a fight starter for a quick burst of damage, and the spell also sits on a 10 second cooldown. Wizard's Fire. This spell is fantastic for a few reasons. First, it is the longest range spell in your spell book at 40 meters, equal to Gust of Wind, but it has no casting time and can be used while moving and has almost no cooldown. This spell can be used to pull enemies or kite harder enemies while on the run. The spell itself deals low fire damage but is very spammable, often allowing you to cast it multiple times before an enemy can close the distance to melee range. And Staff Strike. 
The bread and butter spell in your beginning lore master spell sweet. Staff strike has no casting time and deals considerable damage to a single target and bonus damage if you're flanking an enemy with your animal companion. With only a three second cooldown, this is a go-to spell at low level. Now that we have our starting class spellbook understood, let's move on to how to actually fight with the lore master from the beginning. When I first decided to make a lore master, I envisioned the typical arcane master of most RPGs, standing back and decimating foes with spells of fire and lightning. Now that does exist to an extent within Lotro, but for the low level lore master, this is not the case. The auto attack of the lore master, utilizing wizard's fire to draw enemies in, and then a quick swipe of your staff strike while your bear is flanking is by far the easiest way to bring foes to their knees. In fact, it's so effective that the lore master became more of a warrior druid in my eyes as my levels increased. This became more and more true of how this class tackles content. Real quick, let's talk about setting up your animal companion. This is pretty easy, but I'll touch on it briefly. In most cases, you want to have guard mode toggled at all times, followed by assist, so that your companion attacks your target. The AI of the animal companion is pretty good, so later on when you get stun spells that break if the target takes damage, your companion will automatically stop attacking the target until you re-engage. Be sure to keep an eye on your friend's morale or hit points to keep them from being overwhelmed. But in truth, this is very unlikely, especially at low levels. The starting bear companion is more than a match for the low level content. At 5th level, you gain access to the Light of Hope spell. This is an induction spell with a casting time of 1.5 seconds and heals a chunk of your animal companion or fellowship member's health. Sitting on a 30 second cooldown, this can't really be relied on as a healer spell for any group content. This is more of a oh shit spell if you accidentally pull too many enemies and your companion needs a heal to get through the fight. At 6th level, you are applicable to select a specialization. I recommend the blue tree because it's beginner friendly, pet oriented, and since you will always have a pet out, this is a great starter specialization. This tree is very easy to understand and offers a bunch of passive bonuses to your companion, allowing them to either stay in the fight longer or deal additional damage. Also at 6th level, you gain access to the Sign of Power command spell. This is an instant cast spell that causes an attack speed and parry debuff on a speedy cooldown of 2 seconds and lasts for 30 seconds. It's a solid debuff for boss encounters or if you engage an enemy that is higher level than you. I didn't find myself using it too often because wizard's fire and staff strike alongside my bear was killing things so quickly I rarely had to debuff an enemy. This is however a deed spell but it doesn't cause the enemy to attack you, so just find a random enemy and cast it until you reach your limit for the day. Upon reaching 7th level, you gain access to virtues and your first trait point, but where to begin? I recommend pursuing deeds in your starter area to push the virtues agenda. A simple slayer deed will net you your first virtue. I recommend the wisdom virtue to start with due to its bonus to will, tactical mastery, and finesse rating. It also gives a passive bonus to both physical and tactical mastery and is just a great virtue for the lore master. As for your first class trait, I would recommend Sign of the Wild Rage. This gives your animal companion increased attack speed and a passive bonus to damage. My reasoning is due to the fact that the starting bear companion is pretty tanky and he's able to deal with most if not all of the creatures in the starting area with ease and this is just a little insult to injury. But how do you actually fight with the lore master? Well, in my experience, it's melee over ranged. This feels weird to have made a spellcaster and spend the majority of my combat in melee alongside my companion. And to be honest, at first I was a little disappointed in the strength of the lore master, having played both the hunter and the warden class. But I realized that I was looking at the lore master incorrectly. Although Gandalf is a powerful wizard by all rights, he spends more time in combat with Glamdring in his hand than he does standing back hurling spells. The lore master is more of a hybrid druid spellcaster than the classic Dungeons and Dragons wizard, and using wizard's fire to draw my enemy in and then booping their snoot with a staff strike alongside my bear is actually pretty satisfying combat. Which brings me to combat rotation. At this point in most conflicts, the lore master rotation is very simple but very effective. 
pull with Wizard's Fire, you can usually hit an enemy with it more than once due to its range and lack of cooldown. Since your animal companion is set to assist against any foe you strike, your bear will engage on its own. You then close the gap and staff strike your opponent, which will trigger your auto attack automatically. For tougher enemies, staff strike them a second time. It's a very simple but very effective way to send your foes back to the shadow early on. Upon reaching 10th level, you gain access to your first stun spell, Blinding Flash. This is an instant cast single target that lasts for 30 seconds but will break if the target takes damage. This is the beginning to playing like a traditional spellcaster and allows you to lock down a single target in a group of enemies, but melee is still the way to go for most encounters. Use this to take on groups or as a setup to tackle a harder boss encounter. At 14th level, you learn the Cracked Earth spell, which is an area of effect root with a 2 second induction and has a 10 second cooldown. The spell can hit up to 5 targets at a 7 meter radius, causing the enemy to take fire damage for 3 seconds and then become rooted in place for 30 seconds with a 25% chance to break the root upon taking damage. This is another great way to keep enemies off your bear or engage a larger group of foes, allowing you to root a group, stun one with blinding flash, then pick them apart alongside your companion while staff striking your way to victory. Upon reaching 15th level, you gain access to your second animal companion with the Raven's Lore spell. This spell summons a raven pet that will buff you and debuff your enemies. Although this is nice, in my opinion, it doesn't compare to the raw fighting potential of the bear in overland content or deed grinding. For now, I recommend keeping the bear as your primary fighting friend. Also at 15th level, you will have placed your 5th class trait into rage, giving your bear a bonus of 25% to damage and minus 5 to his attack speed, and your skill at combating single target enemies or even smaller groups will have become a walk in the park. As you achieve 16th level, you gain two new spells, Power of Knowledge, which is a 5.5 second channeled lightning spell that does great damage to a single target and restores power every second during the channeling, but has a lengthy cooldown of 45 seconds, so it's better for ending a powerful enemy quickly or taking out a pesky ranged opponent. The second spell you gain is Knowledge of Cures. This two second induction spell does not heal morale, but does remove up to three diseases, wounds, fear, or poison debuffs from your chosen target. These are both deed spells, so be sure to toss them out occasionally. As you ascend to 17th level, you unlock the second rank of your class traits. You have two skills to choose from or a pet passive bonus to critical hit and damage. The first of the skills is Lesser Giant Eagle, which is an additional animal companion summon. This feathered friend is great DPS and tanky enough to hold enemies at bay. The eagle comes equipped with three skills and a passive buff that increases your in-combat power regeneration. The three skills are Fan the Flames, which takes advantage of an enemy who is under the effect of your Burning Ember spell, causing additional fire damage and causing the foe to panic and flee. This skill has a 1 minute cooldown, so it's best used to scare off a stronger enemy or add additional DPS to a boss. The second skill under the eagle's wing is Beakrend. This skill has another lengthy cooldown of 1 minute and 30 seconds, but causes the enemy to lose morale and the eagle to gain that morale equal to the damage dealt. This is nice if your eagle is being overrun and your Light of Hope pet heal spell happens to be on cooldown. The final skill the eagle possesses is Sacrifice. This skill can be toggled so that if you ever fall in battle, the eagle will sacrifice itself to revive you at 50% morale and 25% power. This adds a debuff to you upon being revived that stops this from happening again for 10 minutes, and the skill itself has a cooldown of 1 minute. The final class trait skill option is Inner Flame, which is a channeled spell of 3.5 seconds that heals both you and your animal companion every second during the casting time. This skill also provides you with a stacking 6% fire and lightning damage buff for 20 seconds. This skill sits on a 1 minute cooldown, but it does provide a self heal to the lore master's spell suite. Of the three options, I went for the eagle companion because I like having a variety of pets, but I think it's more of a flavor of choice at 17th level because you're able to select the other skill upon reaching level 19. And at this point in my adventure, I never felt overwhelmed in combat or felt I needed a heal to progress. 
And it's a pet eagle. I mean, come on. A pet eagle? Am I right or am I right? At level 18, you become a one-man stunning machine, gaining the spells Bane Flare. This is an induction spell with a one-second cast time that stuns the target for 15 seconds but will break after 4 seconds if the target is damaged and has a one-minute cooldown. The second spell is Light of the Rising Dawn that deals light-based damage and stuns the target for 3 seconds regardless of damage dealt and has a 30 second cooldown. With these two stuns alongside your instant blinding flash spell, you can pause combat as you see fit. Now juggling three stuns can be a little tricky in the heat of combat, but I believe in you. Once you hit level 20, your skills as a lore master have reached a new level of power. This is primarily due to the new animal companion spell, Friend of Nature. This allows you to summon a Bog Guardian who excels at dealing ranged damage and comes equipped with three skills that can be toggled to aid in combat. Your Bog Boy has access to the following abilities. Angry Bees, a hive of bees spew forth from the Bog Guardian and deal damage, then a lingering low damage dot for 10 seconds. The skill has a 30 second cooldown. Root Strike, which is a powerful root that launches through the ground, spearing the target. This does good damage and increases range criticals against the target by 5% for 30 seconds. This sits on a cooldown of 30 seconds as well. And finally, Bursting Root. This skill causes an explosion of roots below the target, dealing moderate damage with a 20% chance to stun the target and starts a fellowship maneuver and sits on a cooldown of one minute. This companion will take the main role as your summoned pet. And for good reason, he claps cheeks. Often the Bog Guardian will kill an enemy that you hit with Wizard's Fire before it ever gets close to you. All three of his skills can be toggled for him to use as soon as they're off cooldown, so he is a hands-free pet. He acts as this quasi-vine turret for your lore master. You also gain access to the Wind Lore spell, which is an AoE plus 3% incoming damage debuff with a max of 3 targets in a 40 meter range that lasts for 30 seconds. And the Knowledge of the Lore Master spell, which allows you to examine an enemy's weakness if you're out of combat and it lowers their resistances considerably for 1 minute with a 1 minute cooldown. Use this on elite enemies and bosses to gain an edge before the fight. From here, your lore master is high enough level to start doing skirmishes and instances, at which point testing out the other two class trait trees may be viable or respecting the blue tree to remove the eagle and gain more passive damage, defense, or increase your inner light spell's effectiveness. The lore master is a very versatile class for both solo and group play. Feel free to try out the other class trait trees to experience what style fits you best. At this point, you should have a good grasp on the lore master's strengths and be able to step away from just mindlessly staff striking enemies and play a more traditional spellcaster. Armed with a bunch of induction spells to initiate combat, stuns to lessen the danger of attacking larger groups of enemies, but still very capable of staff striking your way to victory if the need arises. The Lore Master is not the mage as I initially believed when starting out the class. No, you are a warrior druid and by no means easy to put down. I really enjoyed leveling this class and I like the versatility of spells and abilities the Lore Master has at their disposal, even at low level. I'm sure I've missed some stuff along the way, but the purpose of this guide was to not only showcase an amazing class, but to help anyone who may be struggling with how to get a Lore Master off the ground. This is the first beginner's class guide I've done for Lotro. Let me know in the comments below any tips or secrets you have concerning the Lore Master. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like to staff strike the algorithm and consider subscribing to Summon the Eagles. As always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.